Good morning. I'll stand at the microphone. Um, so uh, it, it's nice to see a lot of faces I recognize. Um, so uh, I'm Ian Rogers. I work for, for Google. Um, I write lots of patches. Um, uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, improving perf events, uh, the perf event subsystem after 15 years. When I come to these conferences, I kind of like see a lot of people talking about active development and uh, things which are going into the tree at this moment in time. Um, and I, you know, we've got all these wonderful people. I wanted to do something which is kind of forward-looking and talk about the problems that we have in the subsystem and what can we do and improve. And so, these are my opinions. Um, I want other people to contribute and tell us what we can be doing uh, better and so on. And like, why am I even vaguely qualified uh, uh, to, to do things? So um, I started working um, like 26 years ago uh, on, uh, on Linux things. We were working on binary translators. Um, so uh, the best known of which was Rosetta. Um, but long before Rosetta, uh, we were doing uh, many, many obscure binary translators. And to do profiling on Linux in those days, we had access to performance counters because we had Pentium MMX machines uh, and so on. Um, but the only thing you could do is do system-wide uh, profiling. So uh, you'd use tools like Rabbit to program the performance counters. Uh, you'd go to init level one so that you didn't get lots of other noise uh, affecting your, your profiling. And uh, this was frustrating because as poor students, we only had one development machine. So when you were doing benchmarking, you, you couldn't read your email. Um, so from that, we did a, a master's project, and uh, this became O-Profile. So this was uh, John Levon's uh, work that, that John was thoroughly responsible for. I was in no way, shape, or form. But that's where O-Profile came from. Um, so that was 26 years ago. We've got Pentium MMXs. We've got Pentium Pros. And 15 years ago, um, uh, the perf event subsystem uh, came about. And so O-Profile was seeing less and less uh, maintenance. Um, it also wasn't deeply integrated into the kernel. So it was loaded as a module. Um, there were a lot of similarities between what O-Profile could do and what perf events could do. But over time, the perf event uh, subsystem has uh, taken over uh, from that. And uh, when this was happening, the kind of the machines of the day were, um, we'd gone from Pentium Pros to Core 2 Geos and Athlon 2s. Um, so we've got some um, multi-core uh, systems, um, but it's still looking like SMP. It's, it's not that radical. Um, something interesting, in my opinion, happened eight years ago. Um, and um, the nice thing is that Intel did this work and uh, they actually wrote it up in their device driver. So go into the, the kernel tree, go and look at i915perf.c, uh, and you'll see various explanations of why the perf event subsystem was not used for the i915 GPU. Now, it, they have some events um, in there, but you know, the, the summary is that when you're doing things on GPUs, being able to do things like obj jump it's not that useful. So what are they really getting out of the perf tool? And then the perf tool is oriented around threads and CPUs and virtual addresses. And these things didn't translate well onto the GPU. So it was a lot of churn for everybody. So they decided to do their own thing, uh, do their own separate um, you know, uh, subsystem for doing uh, performance events. The standard way to do this is to, is to do everything through IO control. So um, eight years ago, the machines of the day were starting, starting to see you know, heterogeneous uh, systems. So what Intel likes to call hybrid, ARM likes to call big little. And we're also starting to see you know, ever more uh, accelerators. So I work for Google, so we've got uh, TPUs uh, down there as well. So um, you know, forward looking, what needs fixing? Um, I, I would say that. You know, more and more of your interest in compute isn't on your CPU. Uh, I, I gave a talk uh, uh, last year about uh, top-down uh, profiling, and everybody's familiar with that problem that you know, they have to work out why their machine is running slow. And so they run task manager, they run top, they run perf top, they run all of these things. But that's not where your interest in computers these days. And how are we showing you where that interest in computers is? Um, the, you know, the vendors have, have solved this problem. The problem is that they're all solving this problem. So we have one API, we have CUDA, we have Rockham. Um, 
We have many different open standards, uh, none of which are you know, properly integrated into the Linux kernel. Um, for Encore events, I already mentioned that you know, they're interested in things like DRM job IDs. They're not necessarily interested in threads and CPUs. Um, and topologies have become much more complicated than they were in the past. Uh, we have things like L3 caches, chiplets, uh, and so on. So there's a need for the, the subsystem to, to keep up with, uh, with these things. So, you know, in the perf tool, can we meet the APIs uh, where they are at the moment? Because trying to change everybody overnight, it, it's going to be a long process. Um, so, uh, you know, I sent these patches out uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Arnaldo has already picked up a few of them, which is great. Um, and what, what this is showing is it's showing uh, HWMON uh, kind of things alongside regular perf events. So on the, at the bottom, we've got some perf events which are being used to compute a metric, which is the, uh, the uncore uh, frequency of the machine. But then above that, we've got kind of like the CPU temperature and the fan speeds, which are all coming from HWMON. And in the same way as we're able to add a HWMON uh, PMU uh, into the, the perf tool, we can also add additional PMUs for things like uh, GPUs and, uh, and so on. So that's something which is going on. A, a different problem is uh, on scalability. So um, when you're doing system-wide profiling, um, samples in the perf tool come in with a, a virtual address. Um, BPF for a long while has been using uh, build ID plus offset uh, as, as another way of doing this. So when you have a virtual address, you want to know where you know the file and offset so that you can turn that into a line of code where you're you're seeing uh, performance issues. And uh, so the way the perf tool does this, it, it takes a virtual address, but it also um, has a memory map events which describe the, the, the layout of, of, of memory. Build ID offset uh, avoids this because the build ID identifies the file, and the offset is the offset within the file. Now, the problem with this is that build ID offset is much larger than a virtual address. It's four times the size, or 24 bytes larger. And these MMAP events are only if we take off the file name, which Jerry didn't do, uh, but if we, if we did, um, then um, we can get them down to, to, to 72 bytes. So it looks on the face of it that build ID offset doesn't really win as much uh, inside the, 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 the perf tool, uh, because if we switch to sampling that way, we're going to have much larger uh, sample uh, addresses uh, for everything, and file sizes are going to go up, which is bad. Um, but I'm still quite keen on it as a, as a mechanism. Um, one of the proposals that, that, that I have is that we can open an event in build ID offset mode. We can open an event in virtual address mode. We don't need to synthesize all of the, the memory layout for the full system. When we start seeing that we're getting samples in the build ID offset um, way of doing things, then we can transition over to using virtual addresses. But before we transition over to doing virtual addresses, we have to synthesize the, the memory layout for the, the processes where we're getting uh, virtual address uh, samples. So again, it's, 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 it's a problem that we see when we have um, heavily consolidated uh, servers. And I, I know there's been various other proposals on how to, to deal with this. So. Um, other things which, you know, uh, areas for improvement. Uh, I think BPF and perf events have kind of like diverged and we, we, we try to pull them together. I think the build ID offset shows how we can try and share infrastructure within the kernel for, for things like uh, stack trace mechanisms. Um, the, the, the build IDs require access to the page cache. There's an overlap with the S frame uh, stuff. Um, we're seeing issues around uh, context switch performance. So you're starting to see hundreds, if not thousands, of uncore events. They tend to all move on to CPU zero, uh, regardless of what we try to do with the, 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 the tool. Uh, and so context switching on CPU zero is becoming increasingly expensive. The, the PMU abstractions within the kernel, they, people just tend to kind of pick up somebody else's driver and then kind of copy it and uh, change it so it matches their system. Um, so we see things on, on ARM. Uh, hot plug support just isn't there at all. Um, these things like the, the use of the EF flag uh, is kind of like, it depends uh, who's cargo culted from who. Um, so there, there are challenges with inside the, the kernel abstraction. The i915 guys were pointing out that they were not reference counting the PMU from the perf event. 
Uh, and so they were adding to the API for that. Um, there, are, there are long standing points of pain. One that gets forgotten about, but I have a background in doing just in time compilers, um, is that uh, the way that memory map events are represented is the, the length and address that you get it from a memory map event uh, in the perf tool. Uh, it comes from the VMA. It's not actually what the user requested. So this leads to confusion when you put two M maps next to each other because the VMA gets extended. Um, and we do various tricks in the tool to try and make this look like your jitted code uh, is, is, is behaving like an elf, uh, an elf binary. Um, it would be nice not to be doing this and have a, a fuller representation of what's going on. Um, precise events work well on Intel, don't work well on anything else. Um, the it, it's getting better, it's a work in progress, but even within that we have things like uh, capabilities files saying what the maximum precision is. Everybody else says zero and Intel says, says three. Um, it would be nice to be able to get richer information. We've been adding, you know, Nam Young's done work on, on lock contention uh, analysis within the kernel, uh, but, that inf but we're lacking information on say what the, on who's holding the lock. We know where the contention is, we don't know uh, who's holding the lock when that contention happens. So some themes for, for kind of like the, the accelerator work, some of the things that are missing. Uh, bulk APIs, so the ability to open multiple events uh, at once. We kind of need this for the Intel top-down uh, support, the top-down uh, metric events. Uh, they're a complete mess in Intel and they, they, they cause us no end of grief in the perf tool. Uh, they have special requirements that the first event has to be slots and they have to be groups and this, that and the other. And it comes about because of the way the system call uh, is implemented. Um, those accelerators tend to be asynchronous. You, you batch up all of the, uh, the update information that you have. Um, and so uh, one of the problems that I915 describes is that when they DMA over all of their events, then they end up getting throttled because all of a sudden the, the, the driver is seeing a lot of events coming all at once. And the, the, dry, you know, the, the subsystem is assuming that you're running on the, the CPU. Um, and then we need to be able to identify things like DRM jobs uh, and have different ways of, of describing memory and so on. Um, there, there's, there's lots of other things going on. Um, maybe Mingwei's heard and, and other people who've been working on the pass-through PMU stuff uh, for, for guest operating systems. Um, but th this is enabling kind of guest operating systems to have full access to performance events uh, on systems. But this causes lots of challenges. Um, so we tended in the perf tool to say, hey, we should exclude uh, sampling on guests. Uh, that's good for this because it means that the guest operating systems can have full control over uh, the, the MSRs and so on that control the, uh, the, the performance events. Um, but if we get rid of the, this uh, exclude guest OS flag, uh, which is good for PMUs like uh, AMD IBS, then we're, we're forever doing a dance. And whenever we change a default, people shout at us. Um, or at me. Um, there's kind of what should we be doing in the tool to evolve it. Um, and then one of the th things we face is licensing challenges. Uh, a lot of people want to be able to, to use the thing that, that the perf tool is doing, but they don't necessarily want to invoke the perf tool every time and they want to use it as a library. Um, libbpf uh, has kind of a permissive license. It's using uh, BSD2 and, uh, and LGPL. Um, but the perf tool code all comes in as, as, as GPL and, and this creates a, a problem with sharing. So uh, in, in summary, it's 26 years, things have changed a lot. We need to uh, update the, 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 the system. There's a lot of challenges with heterogeneous and systems and, and complex technology, uh, topologies. Uh, thanks to everybody who's contributing in this area. Um, I, I shouldn't take credit for things uh, and so on. Um, and I was asked to put this slide in saying that we're hiring. Um, so if you have interest in, in working in this area, then, then, then Google is, is on the lookout. Okay, that's everything. <laughs>